Be inspired with the special message from Bishop Macedo. Hello, my friends. May God bless all of you and bless you in a way that each of you may understand His voice and word and have the courage to apply it, to practice it in your life. And then you will reap the benefits, the fruits of obedience. Pay attention. I don't know if you have noticed, if you've observed the testimony that we posted before yesterday, Vanderlei's testimony. He was a beggar, he lived on the streets the first 20 years of his life, he slept in a pavement or under the bridge. And he then, when he came to church, he heard the word, and the word of God changed his thoughts, changed his heart, changed his life. So, God, my dear friend, He works with the Word. He works with the Word. Understand this. If you'd like to be a doctor, if you want to be an engineer, you'd like to be a dentist, a solicitor, whatever is the profession that you want to follow, you have to go to uni and study, isn't it? But it's to study what? The word of science, the word of medicine, the word of odontology, the word of, of the law, you have to learn the word. And the word that you receive from the professor forms in you a professional. That's how it works. The world was made with the word, not with the word of science, but with the word of God. God is the Word. So, when we want to have a life of quality, we have to, we have to listen to the Word of God and obey it and practice it and exercise it. If it's going to go against our personal interests, it doesn't matter. Whoever thinks obeys and whoever does not think suffers the consequences because it's by the Word that we receive life. It's the Word of God. When Jesus faced the devil and the devil suggested for him to change stone into bread and would resolve then his problem with hunger, what did Jesus do? Jesus simply contradicted the word of the devil using the word of God, his word. And he said to the devil, it is written, which means the word that came out of God's mouth is written. It's a decree. It's been determined. No one can change it. No one, no one, not even God himself can change the words that came out of his mouth. So Jesus used the word to overcome the devil and said, Man shall not live by bread alone. Man shall not live by bread alone. I'm hungry, it's true. 
I can't change these stones into bread, it's true. But if I use my divine power to do so, then I will stop being the son of man, I will stop being human. No way. I came as a human being to fulfill a human mission and I cannot use my power, my divine power, to overpower the problems that I have to face here in this world. That's what Jesus said, in other words. So, He rejected the devil with the word. He defeated the devil with the word. Three times the devil tried him and Jesus was determined by using the word. And he said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word, which means man shall live by every word that proceeds or that comes out from the mouth of God. So, you who are watching me right now, it doesn't matter what is the problem that you are facing. It's your health or your finances, a problem in your love life, an emotional problem, whatever is your situation, whatever is your situation, do you know how you're going to resolve it with the Word of God? Oh, Bishop, I, I want to see the Word of God bringing bread to me here now. I'm hungry. My house is falling apart. What am I going to do? Am I going to use the Word of God? Yes, you, you use the Word of God in order for it to form in your mind the character of God. This is what it is to be born of God. This is what it is to be a child of God. A child of God lives by His Word. The children of God live by the Word of God, by faith, a supernatural faith in the supernatural, which is the Word of God, which is above the Word of man, above science, technology, which is above everything, because by the Word of God, Things that did not exist came into existence only through the Word. Bishop, teach me how, how can I resolve my problems using the Word. Pay close attention. The Word of God is not magic. God is not a magician. And unfortunately, disgracefully, many people who consider themselves Christians, who say they have faith in God, they want to resolve their problems through magic. Through magic. But it's not how it works. God is not a magician. He does not work magic. There is no such thing as magic with God. What there is, is His Word. And He Himself said, the word that goes forth from my mouth, it shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please, what gives me pleasure, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. So, how does it work in practice, Bishop? How can I use this word then? Start by obeying what you are learning. Obey. Do your part. Start practicing. Obey. And when you start practicing the Word of God, it will be as though you are stretching all of your body in order to touch a point which is above your capacity, you are going to make a huge effort. And that's when you give all of yourself and God comes, stretches out His hand, 
and he gives you his hand and you walk with God. The Apostle Paul, guided by the Holy Spirit, said that we are God's fellow workers. God's fellow workers. To work with somebody it is the following. You, we do our part and the other person will do theirs. That's what it is to be a fellow worker. So, you do your part and God will do His. I do my part and I wait. I wait that God will come and do His part. This is called faith that is supernatural. Don't you think, my friend, don't you think that a prayer don't think that prayers work magic. No, a prayer does not work magic. A prayer is for you to communicate with your father and ask him what you need so that he will then meet your needs according to his will, according to his word not according to your instincts and desires or lust. No, that's not how it works. So a prayer that we say to God has to be rigorously according to His will. Jesus could have transformed the stones into bread, but He didn't pray, Oh my God, take the devil away from here and bring me bread. No, He didn't do that. But he faced, he confronted the devil using the power of the Word of God. The power of the Word of God. When people understand this, when they wisely start to, to practice or to obey the Word of God, then their life begin to change because the world was created through the Word. The world revolves around the Word. Marriages are based upon the Word. Businesses are based upon the Word. The promises are based upon the Word. The justice of this world is based upon the Word. The laws of this world Everything revolves around the Word. The students study the Word. They follow the Word. Whatever is the profession, the profession uses the Word. Everything is based on the Word. You learn the Word. The professor teaches the Word, whatever is the Word. But when we seek and we are interested in listening the word of God which is his voice and we attentively attentively meaning with much attention and we try to put his word into practice then the word of God is materialized in our lives according to what is written Learn, my dear friend, to use the Word of God. Because when you use an intelligent faith in the Word of God, then you are going to be a fellow worker with the Lord Jesus Christ. You are going to be cooperating with the Holy Spirit, which is the Word. God is the Word. God is the Spirit. So, when the person understands that their relationship with God starts by hearing and obeying His Word, then things start happening in their life. Not in a magical way. That's not how it is. Oh, God told me to forgive, so I forgive so and so. Now I want the answer. I want my daily bread right here, right now. No, that's not how it works. 
First, you surrender yourself to the Word, you obey the Word, you practice the Word, you enjoy the Word, you think of the Word, and you are going to see that little by little your thoughts are going to start changing. And once you change your thoughts, your actions are going to change. Your your words are also going to change. It will also change your behavior. Everything starts changing according to what you hear and practice from the Word of God. So as you drink from the Word of God, then the Word of God will wash you on the inside, removing all dirt, all rotten stuff, all the rubbish that is inside of you. And He will place thoughts that are pure, clean, holy, and powerful, which is the thought of God. Don't forget that. Be attentive to this. Jesus said to everybody, those who are hungry, which was His situation, to those who have financial needs, those who have needs in their physical health, those who have any sort of problem. He said, man shall not live by bread alone, which means the life of a human being does not depend on the daily bread. It depends on every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Use your intelligence, my dear friend. Use just a little bit, just a little bit at least, so you can start to walk with God and have a relationship with Him. When you hear the Word of God and you like it, but you don't practice, nothing changes. It's pointless. You have to practice it, whether you like it or not, whether you feel like it or not. You have to practice it. That's how it works. Our relationship with God depends on us listening to His Word. And with His Word, then comes the ideas, comes the thoughts. With His Word comes or everything's made new inside of us. That's how it works. Life depends on on the word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Pay attention. Your life depends on the word that proceeds from the mouth of God, not on your husband, not on your wife, your parents, your children. It does not depend on the government, on your boss, on the employee. When the person listens and obeys the word of God, then they are free, they are independent. Jesus said that, in other words, to the Jews, but they did not understand. They wouldn't understand because they were blinded by religion. See what God says. This is great. Look, God says like this, Oh, if my people would listen to me. Ah, oh, if they would listen. Oh, if my people would listen to me. They would eat, they would eat from the best of the land. <laughs> they would eat the best of the land. However, they have to listen and obey. This is faith and a faith that is supernatural. Faith in the supernatural. Did you understand, my dear friend? The church, the Lord Jesus established the church to congregate those who are interested in learning from His Word. So when you come to the universal church of the kingdom of God, bring your Bible and check everything that the pastor is speaking there. Check in the Bible if it's indeed written there. Because if it's not written there, if it's not according to the thought of God, don't listen to it. Don't listen to it. And report that, Pastor. Our lives, our work is based upon the Word of God. 
Tomorrow we are going to speak more about this. May God bless you all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.